Welcome to the Potter Blog site, April 19, 2013. In a nuclear shop almost heard around the world, uh, the LaSalle nuclear plant in Illinois nearly put Chicago aglow. Uh, based on information from uh, Nuclear Regulatory Commission event reports, and we first broke this story yesterday, it's incredible. This is incredible. It won't make it in the news because it's difficult for people to understand. But uh, Chicago almost became a glowing radioactive sister city to Fukushima on Wednesday. Got so bad at that plant after a lightning strike took out the off-site power to the facility and they had to go into emergency cooling and the emergency cooling was failing. They had to vent the primary core of the uh, nuclear plant uh, directly to the atmosphere to cool it off. And this is the same thing that happened in Fukushima. In Fukushima it wasn't enough. Fortunately, here in uh, LaSalle, it was enough to uh, offset the, uh, the failing emergency cooling system. Now, we're going to get into this story here a little deeper, and we'll have uh, links on our website to the information, and we'll try to explain simply what happened. Now, the, the gist of it is, is that uh, on Wednesday, a lightning strike took out... Uh, both the reactors took out off-site power to both reactors. Let me zoom this up a little bit. There we go. So lightning took out power to both reactors. Backup generators kicked on, but uh, if they powered everything in the facility, it would overload the generators. The systems that measure how much radiation is being vented from the nuclear plant didn't have power. Now that's convenient because that way Anything that vents really can't be reported. So because of this loss of power, the reactors lost cooling capability. Automatic emergency cooling kicked in. The automatic emergency cooling on Unit 2 was failing. Actually, they had uh, two failures, one of which we only found out about today. Uh, first failure was in a uh, recirculating pump that helps cool the fluid. Uh, the second failure, and the most important failure in this one, is that the uh, basically they have these car wash type sprayers that uh, spray water on top of the core to cool it off. Well one of those was leaking, the high pressure one was leaking. Well as a last ditch, as a last ditch effort unit 2 primary containment was vented to the atmosphere. That means basically what's in the core in the, in the dry well is going straight up into the air. Now, pressure was incre increasing in the dry well. So like any spray can or anything else under pressure, when you release the pressure quickly, it cools off. Well, so this venting cooled off and dropped the pressure in Unit 2 enough to compensate for the failing cooling capability of the high pressure cooling system. So in essence what we have is, is the camel was down to its last failing straw. And that last straw was cracked. Fortunately, the camel only fractured its back. Had it broken, Chicago would be aglow. We believe radioactive contamination did occur as a, as a result of the venting of the uh, dry well. But let's look at the uh, NRC event report here. And we'll show you what was new for today that uh, really explains how bad it is. But if it's interesting, as you read this report, as you look through it, yeah, this report really underplays what happens, and the reason it underplays it, what you read in this report, and we'll have a link to it on our website, is presented as if it had occurred, as if they had found this out during testing, instead of this thing actually failing during use. And I'll give you an example of that here. Let me zoom in just a little bit more. Let's get all this on. And what the problem was is they found three pinhole leaks were identified in the Unit 2 high pressure core spraying system. This is basically a car wash sprayer, it's a last ditch effort that sprays water onto the cooling system. It's, it's a high pressure system. Because the uh, dry well is under pressure, to get water in you have to have water at a higher pressure than the pressure in the dry well. So there were, they call these things pinhole leaks. Well, with anything, if it's under high pressure, pinhole leaks spray out a lot of water. And what's interesting is, it says here, the leak 
is approximately question mark gallons per minute. They won't tell us how much the uh, leak was leaking. Yeah, that's, a, that's a serious situation. Because what happened was, is the dry well pressure increased. They couldn't spray enough uh, cooling spray into this thing to cool it off. They were trying to use this high pressure cooling spray system to uh, control the amount of coolant uh, in the unit. And it wasn't working. And because it wasn't working, they had to vent the uh, reactor. That drops the pressure, cools it off. Uh, the dropping pressure makes the uh, high pressure core spraying system more efficient because it's spra now spraying into a lower pressure area, so it's meeting less resistance. Fortunately, it was just enough to keep the reactor cool. Because this thing, if they'd lost this, it, it tells you how incredibly bad it was that they had to vent to the atmosphere. But if they had lost this, they would have lost the facility. And that's our take on this. But if you read through this, it, they don't show you the severity of this. And here's a prime example. The sentence. This could have prevented, prime, prevented the primary containment, a single train safety system, from performing its design function. And also results in the nuclear plant, including its principal safety, safety barriers, being seriously degraded. And notice that it said, this could have prevented. No, it did prevent. This report is written as if they'd found it on testing. No, they found this because this actually occurred. This did prevent the primary contained system from performing, performing its design function. That's why it had to be vented to atmosphere, and that's why radioactivity was, we believe, released. So it's incredible. This thing could have, you know, it's like written like it could have happened. No, it did happen. You know, we're lucky that Chicago's not a glow. You know, to some people, that, you know, that's equivalent of saying we're lucky that Pyongyang's not a glow. But uh, nobody likes to see people suffering. And we're going to show you here some more detailed images so you can get an idea here what's actually going on. Uh, this is the model from the NRC of what's happening. And this is the uh, high pressure emergency cooling core system. And this right here is the core. And up here is the main steam line. So as you imagine, the steam rises. Uh, the water that's uh, been sprayed on drops down to the bottom. So what happens is, is the high pressure steam is bled off. It drives a turbine over here. This turbine drives a pump that sprays water collected from the bottom of the uh, reactor to the top of the reactor to help cool it. Well, apparently these lines in here had leaks. So they couldn't spray in effectively. Couldn't spray in as much. And because the pressure's rising, it's even harder to spray in. You know, a prime example of this is if you've got a leak in your garden hose. You know, if, the gar if you turn the water pressure on to your garden hose, but you've turned the handle sprayer is uh, in the closed position so no water spraying out the front, front, the water really sprays fast out of the leaks in the garden hose. But you uh, squeeze the handle to let the water out of the hose and there's less leakage out of the out of the holes in the garden hose. Well, as the pressure builds up in the reactor, that's in essence blocking the front of this high pressure cooling system from spraying water into the reactor. Now there was also another failure, and I'll have to show you another image to, to show you what that was. But this water down here, it goes through a, uh, a, a residual heat removal system to try to cool the water separately. And that's represented here by some pumps. Well, one of these pumps didn't come online, so we couldn't, they couldn't cool the water down here as effectively as they would have liked to. So we have two failures resulting in the last ditch of venting the core. It's incredible. It's incredible this isn't in top story in the news. I mean, if you imagine all the people that were at risk from this thing. You know, this is one of the reasons why we have our own live indoor and outdoor radiation monitors. Basically what we've done is, is and we show these links over here on our, on our Amazon page, is we've purchased these Geiger counters 
and this software and we've hooked them up so we can monitor indoor and outdoor radiation to know when there's a spike because unfortunately we are too downwind from a nuclear reactor here in Missouri obviously as bad as this was in uh, in LaSalle, Illinois how many people in Chicago that evening knew what was going on? <laughs> probably not many you're not going to find out if something's going wrong until it's too late Fukushima and what those people were told is a prime example of that but it's incredible how close it came we believe based on the NRC event reports to lighten Chicago aglow utterly incredible